Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. And I was talking to my friend Barry about reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. And I, he's into it right now and I, you know, my thing is if that's your thing, uh, go for it, you know. But hey, I've owned my share of reel-to-reels. I had a Tanberg. I think that was one of the earlier ones. So it may have been definitely in the earlier, yeah, maybe early 70s. And it had like this uh, shift knob on that you could go from three and three quarters to seven and a half inches per second. And it looked cool. It had a neat little meter. It sounded good. I can't say it sounded great, but it was just something about that one that really got to me. And I owned a Sony and I owned um, a bunch of them. Oh, a Pioneer. I had a Pioneer for a long time. It was one of these wide ones. I think it was called RT-707. I'll put a picture on the thumbnail of this video of it because it was a really cool looking machine. I've had others, but you know, see what I did with my reel to reels was mostly uh, record radio, live radio shows. I would record radio shows, I would record live radio concerts, stuff that was, you know, ephemeral, that wasn't going to be there once it was over, and I could play those reels to reels. As a matter of fact, I remember recording the night that the Fillmore West closed. So this is 1971. They broadcast the whole night, I think it was like six or seven hours. Um, uh, obviously in San Francisco and I was listening live in New York and I'm like threading up machines and I'm trying to like not cut off songs and everything and I said oh man this could be so great and you know what it never was I don't think it was ever officially released in any format so here I, I don't know whatever happened to that to those tapes but you know a lot of the performances weren't that good it was more about the moment of it happening it wasn't something I actually went back to and listened to but anyway, my rationale for owning a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine was mostly based on the fact that I could record things like that. Entire radio shows that I wasn't going to be home to listen to, that I really loved. I listened to those once or twice. I recorded live concerts many times. Mm, didn't really listen to them that much, but that was it. And I sometimes recorded albums owned by other people who I, you know, albums I didn't own or they were too expensive or something. So I, that was my collection of tapes. And I probably had at tops, I, oh, I had a TIAC. I was into this TIAC for a while. But anyway, maybe I had a hundred seven inch real to real tapes. But anyway, so Barry's going on about getting this uh, restored, uh, I think it was an ATR machine and I kept bringing up this question. What are you going to listen to on this thing? You know, I know that there's a, a bunch of companies that are selling um, dupes of masters of, you know, records that people lust over, right? That whole thing with masters, like copies of masters, that's, that's problematic for me. Like, what master? Copy of a copy of a master? And you think that they're going to take this master and run it, this 50-year-old master, this 20-year-old master, and run it over and over again to make copies and copies and copies to, to sell to people? Really? You know, fragile old tape, they're just going to beat the hell out of it and run it again and again to make... I'm sure some do, but my brain can't fully comprehend the, the business of that and where that master came from. And anyway, it just seems fraught <laughs> with, I'm just confused. You know, but as I say, whatever makes people happy, they should do it. Enjoy it and listen to, the, first of all, watching the reels go round and round on a tape machine is a very cool thing. I, I never tired of that and watching the meters bounce. It's good stuff. So, you know, whatever, whatever works, but you know, there's, there's easier ways of recording things now, and though I am an, at heart an analog guy, I would say making digital recordings is <laughs> easier. First of all, maintaining a reel-to-reel -reel machine and aligning the heads, and there's a lot, a lot of maintenance, a lot of, a lot of work to make it be, a, be as good as it could be. Almost like a, a you know, a, a turntable, tweaking a turntable, mounting cartridges and stuff, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. Um,
but it's a thing now. I, I definitely, you know, when you go to shows and stuff, you see real to real uh, machines in some rooms, and they're very cool. And it's, you know, it's all analog. It's a beautiful thing. So um, it's a thing, but it isn't my thing. But maybe it's your thing. And you should tell me all about it in the comments section below this video. So anyway, it's a shout out to Barry Dickman and Jeremy Porter for being faithful supporters of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank all of my supporters, whether you pay or not. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm so thrilled that the Audiophiliac Daily Show is nearing mm, sometime in August. I don't remember the exact date, but it's first anniversary of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. I should light a candle or something on that day. Maybe have a little, like a cupcake or something with a candle on top. We'll see about that. But anyway, um, working on it. I hope to see you again real soon. Thank you so much for watching.